Hey everyone. So we got some pulse switches and we got a version two encoder and front panel. GG. That's a version two front panel. That's the control that goes with it. So these are not compatible with one another. You can't put this encoder in the place of the pulse switch. You can't put this pulse switch in place of the encoder. They won't work with each other. At best, the version one radio will act erratically and the version two radio just won't. It just will not respond to it. Um, so, you know, putting that whole, whole business aside, right now, if you need an encoder for a version two radio, the only source is Stryker. You gotta go to Stryker. They've got them. Um, you talk to them, you can, you can get these from Stryker. Nobody else has them, and I can't see that happening in the foreseeable future. I mean, but to be fair, this is a custom thing. So I can't see for the foreseeable future um, these being available elsewhere. These are made by LJV, um, and um, just like the original ones, and uh, they're right now they're sort of unobtainium unless you go to Stryker. Nobody's going to have a replacement unless they bought it from Stryker. Hate to burst your bubble there, but that's the reality. Now, regarding the version 1, this version 1 thing has been beaten to death. Okay, so I don't know that I've actually, actually talked about this. I'm going to now. So, there are three manufacturers that make a control that is physically and electrically compatible with the version 1 radio. Okay, that is CTR... Alpha and LJV. There is no such thing as a physically and electrically compatible ALPS. Doesn't exist. Very sorry to burst your bubble. There are knockoffs that you can buy on AliExpress that say ALPS on them, but they're not made by ALPS because ALPS does not make one. You can call them yourself and ask them if you want. Okay? So I have here a Version 1 with the LJV control. It's green. But that is misleading, so don't look at the color and think you know what it is. That's the LJV one. you got to look at the marking on the back of the control. That one says LJV on it. Okay? Then you have a... I have this other one that's an earlier radio that has had the control replaced. And it has a black control, and that one is made by CTR. And the only difference between... The LJV control, which is what this one is, you, know, you can probably see it on the back of the control there. There's going to be a stamp, and it's going to say the man it'll give you the manufacturer on. And that one's an LJV control. That one's a CTR. The difference between the LJV and the CTR and the Alps is how many, how much force is required to change it. And anyone who has been through elementary school science and done the little bit of physics that they do will know that if you make the knob smaller it's going to require more force and therefore it will it tricks you into thinking that it's a stiffer control and it's not it's just that you have more leverage on this big control and therefore it's easier to spin so small controls making it stiffer yeah they do but it's a trick literally you know, welcome to elementary school physics and fulcrums. Look it up. But anyway, so these in here, these are the Alpha branded controls. And they are a little bit different color green. And they are physically and electrically compatible. You can see that they have nearly the same... Uh, they have the same pin spacing. The body of the control is a little bit narrower, but they are the same shaft length. The pin pitch is the same on them. You see that they're a slightly different style control, and I don't know that the camera is really going to focus on this very much. But these are the alphas. A little bit different of a control than the LJV control. They are physically and electrically compatible. And... They are hard to get. Hard. Okay? And these are a little bit stiffer, I think, than the CTRs, if we're looking at stiffness. You gotta look at the data sheets to figure out, figure out how many, like, newtons they are required to turn. So, they're hard to get. Um, 
And then we have the CTR variants, which are fairly easy to get. Um, and these, they have a little bit more of a snap to them. They're harder to turn than the LJVs. And these are both very good replacements for the LJV. Um, because I actually don't think you can get the LJV control anywhere. Um, you could get a Alps knockoff of it. And I do say a knockoff because, again, Alps does not make this control. They make these controls, but I'll show you in a minute why these are knockoffs and these are real. Um, so the CTRs are a very good replacement as well. Um, so now we have the fake Alps controls. And I know these are fake because you can just look at them and tell that they are fake. These are the real ones. Now I bought these through a broker, okay? Because the only way to get the Alps control that is physically incompatible, mind you, physically incompatible, the shaft length is too short and uh, they are electrically compatible. They will work electrically, but then you can't put the knob on the radio. So they're, the only ones that you can get are longer shafts that are, that are actually knockoffs. But yeah, get this out. First of all, you can tell by the way they come you know, you buy them and then a lot of times they'll come in these bags, you know, with like the knobs attached. These came from a broker. Okay. I had to buy these from Core Staff, which is a well-known Japanese electronics parts broker. Okay. So, you know, these are, these were approaching like $10 a piece. They're very expensive controls. And these are authentic controls. And you can tell immediately the difference between the controls. You know, which one is the authentic control and which one is the fake control. Because you can see the absence of the front pins on the knockoff control. Some of the knockoff controls did later include the pins. But you can just look at them and you can just tell that even the steel they used for the control is different. The official control has a sort of dull uh, steel and the knockoff is more shiny. It's that cheap, uh, you know, that cheap Chinese steel. You know, knocking stuff, not knocking stuff made in China, but these are, these are the fake ones. You can tell the fake ones from the real ones. Okay, now, as a side note, these came from a broker, okay? If you want to get one of these, it's kind of expensive to get these. Because if you're going to buy these in bulk, I mean, first of all, if you're going to buy these from Alps, even though they don't work, they will not work in the radio, um, it's going to cost you a lot of money because they're not going to send you... 50 or 100 of them, they're going to send you like 2500 at like $8 a piece, and you do the math. It's expensive. So, you see big piles of them? Yeah. No. Sorry. I mean, nobody has like tens of thousands of dollars to throw away at controls. Also, keep in mind, official controls, other than the ones from the broker, because like I said, these came from the broker. And, you know... <sighs> The problem with parts that come from the broker is a lot of times they'll take them out of the trays like this, which they did, but they normally come in trays. So, for example, I've got these controls. Now, these are like replacement controls for uh, like Cobra radios and stuff like that. And you see they come in these, these trays. Now, this is a part of a tray. They clearly cut it and send it to me, but they come in these trays. All these types of controls, they come in these trays. So when you buy them from official sources, they're going to come in trays, typically. Like these. They come in trays. These, if you buy them from Alps, are going to come in a tray. But since I bought them from a broker, they obviously took them out of the tray because, you know, it's just easier for them to do it. And when I bought them from, a, from the broker, they actually asked me, if I wanted them in the tray, or if I wanted them loose. And if I wanted them in the tray, they would send them to me in the tray, but they would, of course, charge me more money. And I was like, I, I don't need them in the tray. It's fine. 
you know, and that's the difference between dealing with like a broker and, you know, dealing with the manufacturer. A manufacturer will absolutely not send you, you know, whole quantities of controls in uh, loose bags. They just don't, that's just not how they're packaged. You look in the data sheet for the Alps controls and you can see how they package them. They talk about them being in trays. So anyways, um, that's pretty much the story there on the controls for the 655 and the 955. So just to recap this, if you have a version two radio, which is what this one's from, you gotta currently go to Stryker to get it. Um, maybe down the line, they'll, there will be a replacement made by somebody else. But right now you kinda have to go to them to get it. Um, for the other ones, if you know where to go, you can get the CTRs and you can get the Alphas um, as replacements. So, you know, Stryker, of course, also has replacements for these. You know, so you can go to them and get it. But as far as I'm concerned, the only place that you're going to get any of these authentic controls is from them. So if you have to get a control, you're really better off going to Stryker to get the control. Because the controls that they will supply you will work. If you try to get them from you know, eBay or AliExpress, you're going to get, you know, things that are going to be questionable. They might work, and they probably will. But um, right now, especially for version 2, the only authentic place will be Striker. So, you know, let's, you know, knock off the misinformation and move on. Cheers.